welcome to my short session where we're going to do some stretches and some exercises that work our core. My name is Andy. I'm a co-founder of Databricks. I was in the lab at Berkeley with Matei when he created Spark and I created the first Spark Summit or led the team that did that. Speaking of Spark Summits, since you're here you probably use a computer and that means that you're vulnerable to uh, strains or injuries in your neck and your shoulders and your wrists a lot like me. I actually have tendonitis in my wrists and so I'm going to actually focus my uh, session today a little bit on those areas that we might all need to give a little extra care to. You don't need any experience. I'm a beginner myself at a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing. What we're focusing on is going to be a fork of vinyasa flow yoga called ML flow yoga. I'm also going to mix in some qigong, which is a very gentle type of exercise as well, and some things that I've learned in my high school gym class and some weird things that I've seen Databricks engineers doing next to their standing desks in the middle of the day. When we borrow from yoga and qigong, it's good to remember that these are traditions of people and that they go back very back a very long way. I'm very grateful that these traditions exist, even though I don't know a lot about them, and I'm happy to be able to have the chance to do them with you. Speaking of traditions, we're going to work traditions from our community into this as well. What is the thing that we all have in common? Even though we're pretty diverse as a community of Spark Summit attendees, we all love data and we all are pretty darn nerdy. So I'm going to work some of that in too. To get started, we're going to begin with a little bit of stretching of our necks, our shoulders, and our wrists. They're some of the key supporters of our careers in tech. Great. So all it takes is just find a place to stand in front of your desk. You can do a lot of the stretches that we're going to have at the beginning here, sitting down too, and turn your neck all the way to the left. Just rotating your neck and hold for five seconds and then back to center. To your right, hold for five seconds and back to center. One more time. As you let your neck drift over to the left, think about the features in your feature store and how they drift. Drift away from the true distribution as new data arrives. And as you stretch and let your neck drift to the right, think about that data drifting and then your production pipeline, noticing, catching it with an alert or a trigger, and retraining, rerunning that pipeline and returning the data to the true distribution that we've observed. Now, let's go forward and back. Lean your neck to the forward position all the way to the end, the edge of your range of motion. Very gently. Be gentle on yourself. Hold there for five seconds. And backwards. And back forward. As you put your head forward, think about applying an input to your neural net and having all of those nodes percolate the data through dot products and nonlinear transformations all the way to your loss function on the other side. And then we compute our loss and we go backwards. We send back all sorts of partial derivatives, building upon each other, updating our parameters, forward pass and back prop. One more range, forward pass, and back prop. Wow, oh, feels good. Great. Okay, and finally for our neck, we're going to just roll our neck up real slowly all the way around the full range of motion, taking time to notice what it feels like at each angle, rolling like we're in our gradient descent, training our network, and we hit a saddle point, so now we've got to move in all different directions, exploring the full space that we could move within the loss function, looking for positive tangent. Just looking. And if you're feeling ambitious, you can accelerate 
push yourself a little bit more towards your range of motion, like adding in some momentum with, mo with Atom or some other advanced optimizer. And thanks to TensorFlow or Torch or some other audio gradient differentiator. But we don't have to even know how to do the math. Great. Now let's roll out our shoulders. Roll back, up and back, up and back. As you get back to the back part, try and touch your shoulder blades together. Down and forward, and your shoulder blades pushing apart, like they're two same poles of a magnet. And then switch, attracted, pushing apart, attracted, pushing apart. Now change directions, rolling forward. This rolling should be very easy, don't push it. Should be very easy, unlike rolling your own spark cluster. And finally, we're going to do our wrists. Starting with the right wrist, just tuck your arm in close to your body. Take your other hand and apply downward pressure gently to your full range of motion with that right wrist. You can include your thumb for part of it, or you can skip the thumb. You should feel tension, a stretch in the forward part of your palm and in the upper part of your wrist on the inside. Just hold for five seconds. And switch sides, left wrist, arm tucked. Breathe deeply. Return your awareness to your feet. Picture your feet on the ground. Feel the pull of gravity pulling you down on the ground. And now, right arm in with your wrist inside. Five seconds. Breathing into your feet. And now left wrist inside. Five seconds. And one more round. Right wrist outside. Left wrist outside. Right wrist inside. And left wrist inside. We're going to take a moment at the end of our stretching and loosening to just stand in what we call mountain pose in yoga. Hands at your sides, feet hip width apart. Just feeling gravity pull you down into the ground. Moment of quiet. Before we start to work our core muscles and our leg muscles. For this next section, which is the only remaining big section before we do a calm down, we're going to work uh, through a flow of positions. And the way I would like to frame this is we're building a pipeline. You think of it as a three-stage pipeline with three poses. And then we're going to put those into production for working through two flows. In vinyasa yoga, we would call these things a flow of yoga poses. In ML, uh, production machine learning, we would call a uh, production pipeline. And we, we would build a production pipeline, and we would do that using ML flow. So the three poses we're going to do are warrior one, warrior two, and reverse warrior. For that, let's just practice. Let's just practice the moves at first, and then we'll put them into production. Uh, the three moves are this: for warrior one, you may have seen this before. It's a very popular yoga move. Left foot forward, uh, right foot behind you, right leg straight, and um, left foot bent, left knee bent. I mean, don't have your leg, your feet um, on a single rail. Imagine they're on like railroad tracks. So there's a foot, half a foot of space between them on vertical paths. But next, you're going to make sure that you're tucking your butt under. And so you've got some uh, tension in your butt muscles and your lower back muscles and your abdomen, especially your abs as you tuck. And then you're going to bring your arms straight up next to your head as, or however high you can get them. And look your gaze towards the sky a little bit. Hold that back foot forward, that back foot down to the ground. You want your weight evenly distributed between both legs. And just hold warrior one for two seconds. 
Okay, great. Next, in our flow, we're going to flow from that into warrior two by bringing our right arm down behind us and our left arm down in front of us. You want to create a, a flat plane with your two arms. <sighs> Looking forward, keeping your weight distributed between both legs. Warrior two, two seconds. And finally, reverse warrior. Put your right hand on your back and your thigh. Flip your left palm and raise your arm up, feeling the stretch along the side, your left side. Raise it up straight, looking up to the sky. Okay, so those are the three positions in our pipeline, the three operators, if you will, and now we can run our pipeline. We're going to start with our right leg, so instead of our left, we're going to go right leg forward this time. We're going to do work our way through each of those three poses twice, two seconds each, uh, two breaths each, and then switch and do it with our left again. Okay, ready? So warrior one. Warrior two, flow right into it. And reverse warrior. Great, and switch sides. Warrior one. Warrior two. And reverse warrior. Okay, back to the right. Warrior one. Warrior two. Reverse warrior. To the left, warrior one, warrior two, and reverse warrior. Very good. And now that we've warmed up our core muscles, sides, back, neck, and upper legs, releasing our whole body. Let's take a chance to go back and loosen and relax back into that original uh, flow we had from the first section. To that, we're just going to shake out one part, starting with the top of our head all the way down through our whole body. So start by kind of loosely shaking your head, just very gently, and then your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, your torso, your hips, your knees, one foot, the other foot, kind of just your whole body. Just shake it all out real gently, all within your range of motion. Nothing, nothing stressful here, just really letting all the tension pour out of you down into the ground. All right, very good. That leads us naturally into our sprint retrospective, in which we're going to take a moment to stand in warrior pose here at the end. <clears throat> Feet hip width apart, hands at our sides, or you can put your hands at your chest in a prayer position. We're just going to close your eyes and reflect back. Thank our bodies for their support in our careers. And reflect on how data has really changed everything for us. Oh, data, we are rooted in your understanding. You bring us better decision making and deepen our impact upon the world. May we always remember when we are lost that you, Data, will show us the way. And may we carry Data in our hearts as we go back into our sessions, always. Thank you for joining my session.